going to demonstrate how to step by step disassemble a system unit. So, as you can see, um, it may not be as easy as we expected because my system unit here is not complete. But I promise you that I will explain the procedures and step by step so that you will understand it. Even though my system unit is not complete. And um, last, all we need to have is a Phillips head screwdriver or our cross head screwdriver so to disassemble this system unit. That will be so easy. So now, let's start. Step 1 Unplugging. The first thing you do is to unplug every cable that is plugged into your computer. Just as you know, my system unit is defective so I don't need to unplug anything connected to my system unit. But in real life, if you would be going to disassemble your system unit, you might want to unplug the power cable right here before you do anything else. As for your safety purposes and the safety of your workplace. Step 2. Opening the outer case. Unscrew the four screws at the back of the computer. On most computer cases, there will be large knobs that you can unscrew by hand or by screwdriver on the back right side of the computer. Step 3. Remove the system fan. This is the system fan. To remove it, you can find the plug by following the wire from the fan. Step 4. Removing the CPU fan. The CPU fan is already removed to the motherboard. But just as you know, the CPU fan is located right on top of the CPU heat sink which is a large piece of metal with fins on the top. The CPU fan plugs into the motherboard in an awkward place. That is hard to assess, but you can do it. Step 5. Removing the power supply. The first thing to do is unplug every wire coming from the power supply. You must disconnect the motherboard, CD or DVD drive power, internal hard drive power, and portable hard drive slot power. Once everything is unplugged, unscrew the four screws holding the power supply in place on the back of the computer. Next, push the power supply from the outside and then lift it out. As you can see, this is the 20 pin Molex ATX power connector. This is the 4 pin brake connectors. And the 4 pin Molex connectors. Well, as I've said earlier, this system unit is not complete. Unfortunately, it has no CD or DVD drive and RAM. But I promise that I will still be explaining those steps as it is essential in disassembling a system unit. So I got some clips from step 6 and step 8 on YouTube. Yet, credits to the owner. Step 6. Removing the CD or DVD drives. First, unplug the ribbon from the back of the drive. Once that is completed, pull on the top securing the drive in place. Then push it out from the inside. Before we move on to another CD deal bed, Let's get back to our own system unit for step 7. Step 7. Removing the hard drive. To remove the hard drive from the side of the slot, unscrew the four screws securing it in place. You must be very careful not to drop the hard drive since it is very delicate. Step 8. Removing the memory. To remove the RAM or the random access memory, push down on both tabs holding the RAM in place. 
which are located at both ends of the ram. And last but not the least, step 9. Removing the motherboard. Before removing all the connectors from the motherboard, make sure you memorize the connectors for assembling the computer if required, as that may require connecting the connectors at its place. Remove the screws from the back of the motherboard and you will be able to detach it from the cabinet. And that is how you disassemble a system unit. So don't forget to take care of your screws because it is really important. And it is necessary to assemble your system unit back. So if you're going to assemble your system unit again, just reverse the steps and you will have your complete system unit again. The functionable system unit. And that's it. I hope you learn a lot and 